So as soon as Motion Studio version 1.15 lands, you're gonna notice a bunch of new stuff uh, all over the place. There's uh, basically a whole new theme for every single screen, a whole new page, and a bunch of new options for everything from folders to tiny little functionalities that'll really help you just navigate Motion Studio as well as the extension. So in your settings, we'll have all the appearance options where you can change to your dark theme, the light theme, or also the system preference to automatically adjust with your system. You can also turn on or off the auto shrink navigation navigation option, which just is going to auto expand the navigation over here in the sidebar automatically if you have it on or off. So let's take a look at something you might have noticed in the beginning, which is on the different screens, the folders that you can now click into and you know navigate through with these little breadcrumbs at the top. So I'll create a new folder here and we'll get creative and call this something like a sample folder. And I'll show you how the folders work. So first off, you can drag any palettes on any of the different screens onto the folders. And just like you'd expect, they get dropped into the folder. You can also right click on the folder and pick custom icon. So I'll look up something like sample. Didn't have any results, so maybe I'll look up something like lab. I was thinking lab sample, but we use this nice dog SVG, and that'll be the new icon folder. So if we right click, we can also pick the folder color, and this is the background of this folder. So if I wanted to pick a blue or maybe a white, some color, just make this folder look different from the other stuff. And visually, that'll just help with like library management. So I'll drop a couple more of these palettes in the folder, and then we can click inside of our new sample folder. There's our palettes, and you can also create a new folder in a folder. So if if you wanted to go as inception as you want and just create trees of folders and hierarchies very easy to do maybe pick a custom icon i'll pick a nice warning icon and change the background of the folder to uh, orange or maybe like a muddy brown i guess and up at the top if you saw that you can also do like navigation through this breadcrumb here so as far as you go out down into the folders you can always jump back from the root or into folders pretty quickly and just navigate all of your folders like you'd expect and the folders are universal, so any of the screens that you'd expect to have library management on for any of your like custom swatches, custom palettes, custom rekeys, custom tools, any of this type of stuff, you also have your folders and you can pick custom icons and then colors just to help with the whole library management. And there's quite a lot on the way for creating and managing different media assets in Motion Studio. Um, little hint on the create panel coming very shortly. But yeah, we just wanted to have folders in this release. So yeah, you can create it on any of the screens. I'll I'll speed up this video here and we'll jump on over to the next uh, kind of piece of this update, which is vectors, which you're seeing a piece of right here. So let's talk about the vector screen here. And on the surface, it's gonna seem kind of simple. This is just the first version of this as it's gonna kind of build up to support quite a lot more media. And you can search this vector library just like you can for setting the custom icons for folders or different rekeys or any of these things that you're gonna be able to save. This is where all of the icons kind of live. So you can drag these out of the application as kind of the secondary use of this. You can also export as a couple different media types. And this is for basically all of the applications that that Wander might not be able to support, you're gonna be able to have all of your media assets in here and with a bunch of like instant export options for a bunch of stuff from SVGs, like I said, uh, PNGs, JPEGs, HTML, all of these different formats for all of the different assets in the library. And as there's more media, like GIFs, videos, and images, there's gonna be more export options as well for stuff that you might create in Motion Studio, again, hint, hint. And we also have a favoriting and history system for any of these libraries uh, that you might be using, which comes in handy when you create minis, at least for these icons, so you can quickly find the same icons for stuff that you might use in a rekey, you can go back and use in a mini. Sounds a little strange here, so I will show you that in just a second. But anything you favorite in your favorites is gonna show up in your favorites just like you'd expect. Same for the history. So let's jump over to the rekey screen and we can use some of our favorite icons maybe to pick a custom icon for uh, this rumble uh, right here. So we just right click just like we did for the folders and pick an icon. Um, we'll just go up to the favorites because we picked some favorites and I'll pick uh, this nice animal, this crazy animal icon and pick a custom color here. We'll just go for white. And there we go. We have the nice rumble tool or rekey we picked a custom icon for and we'll use another favorite icon here for our generic drop. Uh, it's a blue on blue, which is not great. So let's change this contrast here to 
yellow um, and now we have this nice little smiley face for the generic drop in so we have two custom icons and we can also jump over to the minis where these custom icons actually become a little bit more useful so we'll do a quick refresher on just creating a mini and then setting it active in after effects so i'll go up here and click add tool and we can go check our rekeys we have our nice custom icons for generic drop in and our rumble and over in the colors we also have our folders so i can click inside of our original colors maybe add two of the swatches from oceanside here into our mini and then maybe the swap tool and we'll also just quickly add you know some swatches from the easing and we'll remove these in a second go over to our rekeys and add the generic drop in so this is where the minis get really cool and we'll just go ahead and remove the extra uh kind of tools we added here just right click and remove and we're going to go ahead and just remove all of these extra icons so when you do put a rekey into a mini they do become something a little different so in this case i have to pick an icon again so that's the nice thing about having favorites i can just go up here and pick my nice animal icon uh, pick a similar color just for this example and then we'll just set a preference here to create an animo controller which is all of the stuff that's going to happen in after effects this is just kind of like setting it up so we'll set up uh, another rekey i think i already picked generic drop in but i don't remember actually so i'm just gonna pick generic drop in again and we'll just pretend this is a different tool so i'll pick an icon go up to favorites and we'll pick the smiley face and pretend that's the the rumble i think i switched these around but now we're basically ready to set this as the active mini uh all of the changes that we do in here including the icon any preferences etc all changed real time to the extension panel live in after effects but we can go on over to the main mini folder see it's active this is our new mini so we could rename this something to like custom uh tools something like that that's a good name for this custom little panel it's active and this is a great segue to talk about how we can add system commands also to minis and minis are all about being like short streamlined little shortcuts for whatever your workflows are so we also added shortcuts to every single application command in after effects so anything you can imagine there's like thousands in here you can now access through a mini so if you're looking for something like a purge all memory and disk cache you're sick of digging through a menu bar you can just go and add this to a mini and we'll set a custom icon and color in a second maybe the freeze frame option you're always looking for you can just go ahead and save this as well to a mini maybe there's a camera option or a camera focus option you're looking for to set the distance uh, so we can save this as well and then back in the editor if you had set an ae command and just wanted to swap it out you have this drop down here to pick a different option pretty easily so let's set a custom icon from the info drawer uh, for purge all memory and disk cache we can look up something like destroy uh, didn't come up with anything so maybe trash you know this is the nice thing about a vector library you can generally find something and we can set the icon color as well for this trash icon uh, to a nice red you know we're deleting and clearing the memory that's a that's a red trash can for me so freeze frame let's set an icon and we'll do a little search type in something like freeze uh, none of these icons are looking good try snow we've got a snowflake so we'll set the color to blue to fit the nice freeze frame theme and go down to the last one and set the focus distance to layer needs an icon so we'll pick one camera since we're talking about focus and we'll see one of these random icons is going to work this one's great we'll change the contrast to yellow just so we have a little better visibility but with all of the colors and icons set now we have our ae commands as well as rekeys set up on our new custom mini so we could set this as our active mini in our after effects or we could grab this custom tools mini and export it to one of our friends or colleagues so they have all of the same rekeys or actions so let's take a look over in after effects how the minis and rekeys work on the production side so we have this nice example project set up we have our active mini in the motion mini panel as easy as clicking set active mini in motion studio and in our timeline we have this nice amazing fact pop up and some keyframes set so i find myself using rekey all the time for this kind of thing um, you just open up rekey and say create rekey it'll pull all of the properties that you had selected and keyframes and you can save them so i'll call this something like fact pop up so we can reuse it and i'll click save so the customization of the rekeys on the extension side is a little basic just color and name right now if you want to do deeper editing you can open up motion studio by clicking this edit button and it'll open the rekey that you just created and you can change your icon or your color or the name or any of the animation properties and i do apologize about that overflow we're going to get that fixed but if you wanted to change the icon or something it's all in real time so any of the changes that you make in motion studio
Studio are going to be live in the Rekey library as well as the Motion Mini panel if you had any of the tools or icons over there. So I'm having no luck with fact. We'll try something like information and just grab one of these icons since we have a fact. It's close enough to information. I'm going to take that icon and it's live instantly in the Rekey library. So we're basically set up. Let's talk a little bit more about the extension here. So when you have your pop-up selected, you can hide or show the properties if you are interested in seeing the keyframes or properties. You also have a toggle for the animo mode, which is a little bit more advanced and I'll show you in just a second. But the whole concept of a rekey is like, let's say you don't have this layer in your timeline. So you can't copy and paste your keyframes. Maybe the project isn't open. Maybe you've just lost it entirely. Whatever the circumstances is, if you had an interesting fact like I do and you wanted to add a fact pop up again, you can just click apply and at the CTI or timeline indicator, you're gonna get all of your same keyframes again, just by clicking apply or the button, which can be really nice because in one click, you get all of the effects, the layer styles, and the keyframes all reapplied onto whatever layer you had selected. So we're gonna go talk about Animo by clicking edit here, and we're gonna set up a mini. So we've got the fact pop up, and we wanna put this into our active mini. So just over here, custom tools is active. We'll double click in here and we'll say add tool and go down to the rekeys and the library and we've got our fact pop up. So I'll add that to the palette. You can see it's instantly in the motion mini and after effects. And we can also change the icon here and we'll just you know, pick another information type icon. And then we can go back to the editor and set some of our preferences. So for the fact pop-up, I'm gonna do an Animo controller. This is the same option in the Rekey library over here up in this top. Um, but I actually like having this toggle on and we can set a modifier key as well. And that just means like when we run this, it's gonna automatically get put on an Animo controller as well. So I'll show you what that means. Um, so I got the interesting fact, I'll delete it um, just to make sure we're starting from fresh and maybe in motion you're on another screen and this is why the minis start to get kind of helpful so maybe you're doing something with color with <laughs> no active composition you're changing colors on your composition maybe to black to white whatever you're doing but long story short you're just trying to stay in a color workflow but you do have something you need to animate so we've got another interesting fact that came up in our project we need to animate this quick i'll just go ahead grab my interesting fact and run my fact pop-up animation for this project and it's put onto an animo which was the kind of more advanced option we set and what animo does is it puts all of our keyframes onto a percentage slider that we can retime um, very easily just from two keyframes if we want as a very basic level or we can go crazy with all kinds of extra keyframes for non-linear stuff but whenever you can i do recommend using an animo for your keyframes it makes retiming so much easier but also it opens up all these possibilities to kind of like scrub through your keyframes with a bezier curve and I'll show you what I mean so just by changing this little animate slider it's a percentage of your animation so if you were to go into the curve here and just change it um, you're actually changing like the playback speed of your animation but you're also preserving all of the timing of your ease curves and your keyframe set from your rekey so that's a lot of fun to play around with just by moving one of the bezier handles you're literally changing like the playback speed of all of this so you can have a hold or held section kind of in this middle and it also opens up the possibility of these non-linear type of animations where you're kind of scrubbing forward and then backward and time and then back forward in time through your keyframe set in this sequence of an animo but animo is definitely an advanced kind of like power users tool but once you get used to using animo it's hard not to use it on everything because it can really make animation much more interesting and flexible to do but uh, let's go in here and just on this fact pop up we'll set a modifier which is an extra option of these minis and this is like a secondary tool run so for maybe one of the runs i can have it set on an animo and for one of the other run runs just default so I'll just go ahead and delete everything in this composition and just show you again uh, how we can kind of modify these runs. So I've got an amazing fact here. I'll just click it and run it normal. So it's gonna add keyframes just right at my timeline, just like that. It's exactly what I originally saved to the rekey library. Or I can hold command and run it and get it all bound onto an Animo controller, which is pretty awesome. So this was Motion Studio version 4.1.5. You can check out a free trial over at mountmograph.com. Thanks so much. Peace.